Hello. We're starting a little bit late today. Uh, yeah, the the weather is quite hot, and well, I mean it's hot for for this, this area, and so yeah, um, children need a little bit extra time to go to sleep. I hope my PC doesn't melt. I think it's kind of stable on 64 degrees. And yeah, it's kind of hot. So yeah, we'll see how this goes. It may be a shortish session actually. I mean, extra time today for whatever reason, probably the weather. Um, cool. So uh, let me discuss a couple of things before we start. Um, so yeah, I've been thinking uh, about um, you know, I in the last couple of sessions I've been looking at at the performance of of the code that was using for testing and and yeah, I, I it looks great. I mean, I, we got to the conclusion that it was fine, it was better because I moved to sixty years, but still I wasn't completely sure about that. So. Um, so basically, to get any dubs, uh, you know, out of the picture, what I do, I have done is, uh, I got one old uh, laptop I have, a netbook, Asus netbook, uh, which is not from the period of the game I'm trying to make, but the you know the laptop is like 15, 16 years old. Uh, it has an Intel Atom CPU. It's not very powerful, whatever. So basically, I boot, um, I booted um, pre-DOS, and I run the Bouncy Ball uh, test, and it's just perfect. It's perfect. It's perfectly smooth. No issues whatsoever. So whatever I'm seeing when I'm running tests in in my dead machine is either my local environment or you know streaming with obs that makes things worse or it's just dot box dust box um i got a suggestion a few days ago you know a few sessions ago about using dosemu but yeah dosemu is kind of seems a little bit old and unmaintained and it feels like it's a pain to compile because it actually using it's using SDL one point uh, SDL one instead of SDL two, so I'm not completely sure. I'm still looking for other options, but for now, I you know now I know that I don't need to worry really because uh, you know I try in a real PC and it works fine, so there is no performance. That's why you know I'm doing exactly the same as other pieces of code and it should be doing the same uh so you know other examples i have and it's doing the same so i think I'm, I'm happy with that and you know if i want to do serious testing i just can use qmu and you know get on with it and you know do proper emulation but for now i think i'm happy dustbox is very quick to start and you know it gets the stuff done so okay so that out of the out of the way i think we are okay uh we can go i can continue with those box even if you know it's not great i mean still has to work on those box reasonably well because you know i use those box and i know that people will use those box to play the game you know if someone play, plays the game right so that's one thing. Another thing is that um, you know, previous the yeah, previous week I, I I streamed more. I was working more on the game because, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm running all the time, or we are running all the time. We have a month or three days now. Um, but what I've been doing since last Thursday is more, you know, trying to decide what type of game I'm going to make. and drawing sprites. So I have a lot of sprites now, or at least enough to get it started. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to try to make is a single screen uh, platformer, an arcade game. And I'm going to try to make it feel arcade, right? And I'm going to use, I don't know, what I'm going to do in essence is going to be very similar to what I did with Night Night. 
um, although it's not going to be 99. So the context is going to be, I still don't know the name of the game. I was thinking about gold, gold mine run or something like that. But you know, I need to write, draw some, you know, the title and see how it looks, but something like that. Um, yeah, I have a couple of, a couple of enemies. Uh, I have a very long to do now because I have added everything I know now that I need to do. Um, and you know, have some tiles as well. And I have st I started playing with tile. I will explain when we start working with the map what how this is going to work. Um, I'm not sure if I'm doing it properly because I think um, I'm still I, I am still with that mindset of the 8-bit games. And this is not, you know, PCs is 16 bit and we are in protected mode so it's 32 bit so there's plenty of things i can do that i can usually when i'm doing 8 bit and i am still with that mindset so i'm probably going to do things in a way that is probably not the best way of doing it uh just because i have a lot of memory and i just don't don't remember that i have that memory those resources but yeah, we will get there. Um, we don't have a lot of time, so I need to start being very effective uh, doing things. So for that, I'm going to borrow a little bit from different projects. And because although in my 8-bit games, I end writing a lot of Z80. Uh, the first prototype of most of the routines I write, I write is basically in C. So and then what I do is I comment out that code and I write the assembler by hand. Um, but I always keep the C code. So there's a lot of routines that we, we can just pull from a different, from existing uh, code base. I will explain it a little bit. I will adapt to this game or whatever. And also, yeah, I, I keep thinking, you know, it's 8-bit. And when I do the 8-bit games, um, I don't use the C ROM time for anything. Um, and I need to do everything by hand, right? Uh, so in this case, I'm not going to do that, and I'm going to use the libc and and the zero run time. I'm still not sure I'm going to do um, memory allocation. Probably not. Uh, for example, for the entity system, um, it may not make a big difference. Uh, for example, I totally recommend this. This is not a library. It's one of those include files, libraries, uh, to minus lists, um, which is utilist. It's from uh, UT hash, which I think is the original thing that Troy Hanson made. But then he had him, you know, has lists and and other types of uh, uh, type, you know, um, data structures. So yeah, this one is pretty good. I have used this in C projects and it works great and it's easy to use and it's, it's amazing to be honest, but it uses dynamic memory. So I'm not going to use it. I'm going to go with just plain lists. Um, we will look at that when I start working on that. So yeah, so this is the idea. Uh, I'm single screen uh, arcade platformer and it's still not enough time to do a proper job, I think. Well, a proper job. Um, when I do this type of game, I, mean, I have made this type of game before, and it takes me three to four months. Uh, and at the end, I get from 50 to 80 screens or levels. Uh, so this is going to be smaller. Um, if I manage to finish it in on the time we have. But anyway, I have enough here to get me started. Um, and I think we should start cracking, I think. So for today, if I no I'm mistaken what I put in the thingy underneath. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello, little soapy. Yeah, I'm making a DOS game. Well, I'm trying to make a game for the DOS operating system. So yeah, I'm, I don't remember what I plan for today. I think it's the Bitman from and likely to do the map first. 
uh, because if we start with the entity system uh, without anything really um, if we start with the entity system without a map it's yeah it's not going to be very useful so I think what I'm going to do is do the bitmap font um, I have also a font ready uh, that looks pretty much like the DOS font, but it's a little bit more arcade, I think. And I have already um, prepared the tiles uh, in a single column, so I can use the fast rendering function. Um, I think I'm still I'm going to use the transparent color, although I can change my mind later and we just can paint this, paint this black, probably. So yeah, we're going to, I'm going to start with the font. Uh, and then give it a go to the map uh, because not everything, but at least uh, get the map imported in a renderer. So we have information about what, ti what tiles are, are blo blocked, for example. So we can have collision detention, detection, and we can implement uh, gravity and all that stuff. And for that, when we do that, we can already, you know, we can start having the entity system. Uh, then, you know, the HUD is something we can start adding just when we need this low intensity, really, because it's probably very easy. But for that, I need the bitmap font. So, yeah. And then when we have the player moving around and doing the platforming, and you know, it it is satisfying to jump around because the platform work, the gravity work, collision detection works, then we can start doing the pickups. And this is something I'm not completely sure how I'm going to do, because the idea is that you're going to play this character here, which is going to be running and jumping around, and it will have to pick up gold. Uh, and when it picks us all the gold, you finish the, screen, the stage, right? So it's going to have a lot of pickups and we probably need to have some efficient way of checking that because for regular enemies and, and a small number of pickups, we can probably use uh, yes, you know, square, you know, regular each entity can check against the player and it will be fast enough. But if we have to pick up, I don't know, 60 uh, gold pieces on a screen, it's probably going to be too much to do it like that because it will be very slow. So instead we need to find a different way. I think we can do similar to what I did on Night Night or for example, uh, in a different in the in the test in a test game I made uh, for a MSX library anyway, cool. So let's get started because otherwise. So okay, so I added the sprites. Um, I added the sprites and the tiles and everything, but I didn't add it here. So so we need to add also the font. and the tiles, right? So this is because... Let's, let's remind us as well what it does. In the um, make file, any data PNG is automatically converted into a binary that we embed into the X file at the end and we are extracting the palette from the sprites. I'm using the same palette everywhere, 16 colors, because I thought it was a good idea. <laughs> so I'm using the same palette, so it really doesn't matter where we get the palette. I'm getting it from the sprites, one of them. It really, you know, it's one of the images. It really doesn't matter, uh, as long as we use always the same one. So with this, uh, I mean, it's already building, so is converting those in objects and we linking them. So we have them already available. 
Um, it's just that needed to add that so we can access to them in from main. And in here, we probably, because if I make run, it's kind of broken because I didn't change the code. So that, that used to be the bouncy ball. Uh, okay, thank you. So, yeah, so there's the, the code of the bouncy ball is completely broken right now. Um, so we probably want to drop most of these. So we don't need this anymore. Uh, we don't need this anymore. Um, we probably don't need most of this, really, to be honest. Um, so erase and update. So whatever we do for testing, we can put it here. And then we have a busy wait until we press escape. And that could be just fine for testing. See, we don't get anything and escape. We exit. So that's good for testing. Okay, so. Uh, so where are we going to put this? Okay, so the bitmap font. Um, ah, we're going to add that into text. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. So if next text. Yeah, I mean, naming things difficult, right? So I think we're going to have a uh, put text. Uh, and this function uses Binary font start. Binary font. Yeah, no, it uses. I don't know how to call this. Well, this is for me. For now, I'm not going to document that. But yeah, so this is going to use the font. And I think uh, we need. We can provide XY. And it has to be 16. I just, again, 8 bits. Yeah, it's because you don't have that. You know, the resolution on the machines are usually what I make games for. They you can handle the X and Y easily with one byte. You don't need two bytes. So 16 bit for that. So I would say yes, this is what we need to use, right? So and then here we implement that. We're going to need this. We're going to need. Well, we probably don't need to, but. Oh, have a. An insect in my face. So we need the data for the font, right? Um, and we probably don't need to include this uh, because we're not going to use any other function. So what is this going to do? So, okay, we're going to need to use the blit function. So let's include that. And we're going to need a rec for the destination. And that is always going to be whatever, whatever, 8 by 8. So we can get that out of the way. Now, we can just say while text. And then it's just going to be a lead, I think. 
uh, yeah, it just split. So the sprite is binary font start and then what? So binary font start plus is going to be whatever is in text. Okay, we can have a variable here. I wouldn't expect this to be a problem because... So whatever is the value of text, and we're going to increase to the next pointer. So whatever is in text minus the space, which is the first. I mean, looking at the font I have, um, I only have uppercase characters and so yeah starting from space so if I don't get this wrong so text minus whatever is the space so we start that's going to be our zero so we add C to that and then the destination if I can type and then in destination no I can type and we increase we increase the exposition yeah that should be it um, so and then we do here so we're going to use text right and then put text and then it's going to be um, for example 1010 and we're gonna say testing hello raising the bean how are you doing today okay let's take a last look to this so right it's going to be x y no that's wrong it's going to be x and y uh, size is going to be 8 by 8 uh, Well, we have text we go through it and basically um, I mean in reality we can do this right and then increase the destination um, okay why the call big is VGA Uh, no complaints and yeah that doesn't look right okay so because I'm just mm, not doing it properly so we know that each character is 8 per 8 by 8 so, so we need to increase uh, so this one has to be increased by 8 and then each character is 64 so I guess we can do 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64 so we can do 6 is that correct? Um, and it's complaining about something uh, yeah because Operator preference, right? Okay, so that's the phone working. Um, do we get any warnings or anything from the compiler? No, it, the compiler is happy. If the compiler is happy, we're happy. Okay, so testing. Um, what else we can test? Uh, well, there's nothing to test really. I mean, if that works, then this works. And what is the... Um, uh, what is the character after that one? Oh, the underscore. Okay, so and the underscore is the copyright sign because uh, I think I added that at the end. 
I mean, it's not the right ASCII, but yeah, I just... There is probably more characters that we are going to use in this game, so... Okay, there you go! Including the cup. Yeah, it's working! That's asterisk. It's more like an X, but I'm happy with that. Um... Uh, okay, so yeah, I was playing a little bit at the beginning. Um, yeah, I'm making a game in DOS, so the Haskell project is a little bit on hold. Um, and this is a different thing. Thank you for your kind words about my graphics. It doesn't feel like it when I'm drawing them. <laughs> it's kind of difficult, but I'm kind of happy with this snake. It's the first snake I ever draw. And I haven't tried the graphics. I mean, I have drawn this bat is already from a different game I made. So I know that the bat animation is solid. It will work. Not completely sure about the snake. It probably is. I mean, it's two frames. It may not work. I mean, if you remember the Haskell one, the slime animation is only two frames and it looks really good. So maybe the snake is one of those. Um, sprites that you only need two frames and it looks amazing cool so the put text is done do i need anything else here do i need anything else i guess uh because this is putting the text as is Will it be useful to have uh, to support some formatting, like doing, for example, yeah, because I'm we I have I have the C runtime here, I have libc. I was mentioning that at the beginning as well. When I do in eight bit games, uh, I don't have that, so. So what I'm thinking is, um, what I'm thinking is, what if we do this? Okay, no. Okay, so I'm thinking I could wrap, uh, I could wrap like it was printf. Uh, so we do, we call uh, a sprint so we print on a string and then we call put text because I'm thinking that I may need to print with format, for example, when we are printing numbers like the score, right? Um, so that could be useful to wrap around or oh, just we can do it what we need to, right? I, I'm thinking. Not sure what is the best. I mean, I can have you start. Mm. Yeah, I'm not going to do it for now. Let's not write code that we don't know if we're going to use or not, right? So, okay, we need to be quick with this. So, because I don't have time to finish the game. Um, I mean, so raising the beam. I explained that at the beginning as well. That because there is a, is a, there is a. A game jam here, a competition that is the excuse to make this game, right? When it really because I want to make a DOS game. And when I, you know, back in the day when I was doing DOS and I was using this same compiler, I never f managed to finish anything because I was kind of okay writing C and using the compiler, but I, I was not good at making games. Now I'm good, or, you know, kind of good making games. So I thought, hmm, interesting, let's make a game for DOS. The game I never made, I'm going to make it now. Um, so yeah, I would like to submit the game to this jam. So that's the time limit. I have one month and three days, three, three days left. So we can't waste too much time. Um, um, so I'm thinking, uh, what did I do in the sprites? Did I change anything in the sprite recently and I didn't comment? Oh yeah, I did add this thing. Okay, fine. Oh, it's okay. So... Okay, so... Hmm... 
whatever. Okay, so this is here is uh, yeah, I, yeah, I added more sprites. I added this effect here. Yeah, because I'm thinking I kind of like the idea of having keys and we can block part of the map with those doors. Uh, sorry, last question. Are you doing this game exclusively on a stream? Yes, and that's is, yeah, it's and it's kind of difficult because sometimes I I feel like working more on it, but I don't have time to stream. Uh, and you know, sometimes if I have, like, I don't know, maybe I have forty-five minutes, half an hour, uh, that I could be working on whatever. I'm not going to work on this one because I want to do it on a stream. So, actually, um, oh, not that one, not the orange, the orange side. So here, I mean, there is a frequent ask questions here with information, but basically, uh, the get the all the the videos for this series. Uh, for this game, I'm I'm putting them together in this uh, playlist after after the stream. I upload them here, so there are already six videos. It's not a tutorial or anything like that, but I guess I don't know. It may be interesting or not, or at least inspiring uh, for people if they want to do something like this. Uh, because I'm I'm building everything. I'm not using a library. Is going a little at the beginning it was a little bit too slow. Uh because you know I I I I didn't know some things and other things I didn't remember them. So uh like I didn't remember that the BGA had six bits per pixel. Um and things like that. Anyway, so because the other testing code is um it doesn't work anymore, so So let's commit this just in case someone is playing with the code. At least they get something that is working. Anyway, uh, raising the beam. I mean, you feel feel free to ask any questions that you want to ask. It's okay. Uh, I can do things and answer or whatever. Okay, so that this is done. And it's not really, it's not really, um, it's not really the, the DOS font, right? Hey, what is that? Oh, because the DOS font doesn't work now because I'm using this is special VGA mode. Oh man. Well, I wanted to compare them, but yeah, it's different. It's definitely different. So, uh, I mean, not that much, but a little bit different. I think this one looks nice and it looks a little bit arcade, which is what I want, especially the numbers. Cool. Anyway, so that's one part that it was easy. I knew it was going to be easy. Now, we need to do things with the map. So for the map, uh, again, probably because, you know, this is, is it protected mode? So it's very likely that we have like whatever, uh, two megabytes, four megabytes. I think my, my first Pentium had already eight megabytes of RAM. So, and we can access all that. So I'm not completely sure if I want to do things like I was, I was planning to do them. So basically, um, the tile set I'm using here is six, uh, eight, no, 16 by 8 because I'm going to use uh, HAL platforms here um, like I'm doing in, in the Haskell project. So it's the same here. Um, and in the Haskell project, I'm using eight by eight. 
So now I'm having second thoughts. Should I be using eight by eight and make this super simple? Because I'm already doing some weird stuff, like having these um, tiles here split. I continue with this it's transparent. I think it's probably not worth it to be honest. Even if it may, may you know, if I need to drop this off. Uh, because, okay, so, so 320 or two by 200. So, so it's going to be 40 by 23. Okay. Yeah, because I'm I'm going to leave two lines for the for the hot for the you know the score and everything. So that is going to be 920 bytes for one screen. Who cares if we have megabytes, right? <laughs> so I'm being silly. This is silly. We should I shouldn't be doing this. Okay, like this. Okay, so um so let's see if we can change the map properties. Can we change the map properties? Yes, we can, of course, which is going to break everything. Yeah, because the width now is not going to be 20, but it doesn't allow me to edit it. So it's okay because we can do this. Not the sprites. Don't do that. Don't edit binary files. So, uh, stage. Okay, we can change things here, I guess. And so, so eight by eight to start with. No, let's, it, it's not worth it. Let's make a new map because otherwise it's going to... Uh, okay. Will it break everything to some extent? I'm wondering if it's probably better just to start from scratch. So, hey, 23, fine. Uh, 23, 23. Now, the width is going to be 40, please. Uh, and the width is going to be 40 somewhere else. Uh, tile width is going to be 8 and 40. They have changed the format actually. I'm kind of used to. Yeah, Curl Layer. You know what? We don't care. Let's make a new one. New map. Uh, so we say it was going to be. 40 by 23 and instead of that 8 by 8 so 25 is 325 200 but we sacrifice two lines to do the the hot the, the score and the lives and all, all that all like that so fix csv write down orthogonal save as not this one, please. Let's go to my DOS projects. Game data stage. Yes, please. And then we have a new tile set. We're going to call map. It really doesn't matter because I think we're going to have only one tile set. And it's going to be tiles. Okay. There you go. And let's make this bigger. Even bigger than that. Like this. And okay, and then the tile layer we're going to call we're going to call it map, whatever, it really doesn't matter. Now the only downside of doing it like this is that 
the render is going to be super silly as in it doesn't it's dumb right not silly dumb so it doesn't know anything about it doesn't do anything special so basically what it's going to do is going to have uh, an array of bytes it's going to tell us the number of the tile and we're going to draw that tile on that position on the screen so that's it which means that we need to draw everything ourselves here and that's going to be a little bit of a pain because basically the way i made the tile set is not very comfy for that so we're going to change it and also we have duplicated information here like because now it's 8x8, eight eight. For, for the shadows, we only need one black. We don't need two blacks, because one black is enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move things around here and try to make it easier for us to work with. So, although it's 8x8, eight eight, but this is a block of tiles. Um, and also... So, so that one is shade. Now, another thing we need to think about, or I want to think about, is that um, there's going to be different tile sets, and potentially we can use the same. So, the same map, we could be swapping the tile sets, perhaps. I don't know, it probably doesn't matter. And it's not worth it really but one thing we want to do for sure is to have some sort of order because we can get what is the tile id of the last one here i mean if we save now tile that is amazing by the way so that's the tile id 29 right so we know i mean we can let leave two rows for background tiles and this for foreground tiles after that and we could be using that information so the same map with for render by looking at those uh, tile id we could be using that for um, collision detection already so that's going to make things super easy so for example we can leave these two rows here or background tiles this for foreground tiles but again i'm going to change this because i want to make it easy to use right easy to draw and we can leave the last one for deadly blocks that for now i have two spikes but now we only need one because it's the same cool uh right okay so now I mean, it's going to be even easier to draw now when we prepare this data like this. Um, it looks like we're going to use uh, to to waste some space um, on the tile set, like a lot. So I don't know. Uh, maybe we can make it smaller. Um, so how many tiles is that? Is so so 208 that is 26 uh less than 20. so oh no and by the way we shouldn't be doing it like this don't don't do this uh, basically because yes please thank you um yeah because it's probably better if we decide because either you plan things in advance or if you don't give you some space in case you made mistakes so raising the bean is telling us i remember when i started priming games on my amstrad cpc using the tool called sprites alive oh, i don't know that tool I didn't really understand the spray sheets. I thought I needed one copy of the sprite on each for each on a screen instance. So I had spreadsheets full of the same. 
alien. <laughs> yeah, well, one of the things you learn when you're doing games for the after CPC that is that in here, because we have a lot of memory, I can draw the sprite looking to both sides, but that uses a lot of memory on the CPC. So instead, um, you use some tables and you flip the sprite on the fly. But here, it's not worth it. Why am I going to do it if I have a lot of memory, right? It's easier to just draw without having to flip. Anyway, different platforms, different tricks, different everything. And now it's a shame because I had something draw here and it was kind of nice, but it's not a problem because now we have set everything in a way that we can just very quickly uh, get to the same point, to the same place without really wasting too much time, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, there is actually people uh, doing, you know, building modern version of those things that you mentioned. It. Uh, like, um, I think there is a tool called Seven Bits of Power, which is a kind of fancy name. Uh, that is actually providing that same that same stuff uh, that you're mentioning, and it basically is providing you know RSX extensions, and people can. I'm, I'm making very nice games with that, um, actually, because it's kind it's quite powerful. Hmm, now I'm thinking, do I need these two levels ready? I think I may not need them. Or maybe I do. I don't know yet. Anyway, it's going to keep drawing until we have again some... It's just going to be a playground because... This is what we're going to use when we start testing. Uh, let's do something. Can I see the grid, please? So... This is just some basic... Like having something interesting to jump around. And... Try things and see how it goes. Um... It's not really that much. Mm, I don't remember. Ho, ho. Yeah, I think it was like this. Yeah, I should have paid more attention, really. But anyway. Uh, it's just throwing a little bit. So we have something to jump around. Uh, for example, it shouldn't be able to jump to this platform here, so... Okay, so which one is this one? It is this one... No, it's not. It's the other one. Yeah. So, for example, when I'm, you know, just this thing I'm trying to calculate, um... If I was doing, if I was doing um, a bits, I was probably going to calculate that. Um, so do that programmatically instead of of just throwing it like this, uh, because yeah, we have a lot of space. But well, how much did we say? Uh, 920 bytes. That is a lot. I mean, in my AKP games, one screen can never go over, say, 80 bytes. Otherwise, you can put a lot of screens and you want people to have a lot of screens to play because otherwise the game is short and it, it, they don't like it. You don't, people don't like short games. Oh, but you can say, oh, but I mean, you only have 64K, right? 
and that includes the video memory and everything so well it's not that bad yeah but you know the expectations are sometimes cool i mean it's just throwing a bit i don't oh i just noticed something i uh, made a mistake here because I'm duplicating this one, so... So I didn't need to do it like that, because it's, we only need to use one tile. Anyway, uh, as I feel like I have time and I want to play with it, I will probably try to draw more... Um, more tiles to make it looks nicer um just some by eye you know so it's not always the same or whatever i think this is okay um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to, I mean, I'm trying to draw things in a way that, sorry, let's do it the way around, it's, it's faster. So I'm trying to draw something that I think it will have some bits that are interesting for testing, but I may, I might be completely wrong and I'm just wasting time, which is possible. It has happened before, so... Okay, so that's a good testing map. Um, yeah, my idea was to have this done already. <laughs> but I failed, clearly. So... Cool. So this is a good testing map and we're using 8x8 tiles because we have plenty of memory. I mean, I'm not even going to think about using compression whilst in an 8-bit, you need to use compression everywhere. So now we need a tool to get because here, so we just have the map layer. Um, I'm trying to think what is the best way of doing this. Um, do I get one of the, my existing tools? Uh, and then... Now, one problem that you have with tile, which is not a problem, it's not a problem, but in this case, it's not going to be a problem, is that usually what you want is to have I mean, I would like to have a way of defining rooms uh, because in this case it's not a problem because we're going to have every map is going to be a independent stage, right? And in this one is not a problem either because we have a scroll, right? So it's one continuous room. But in the A bits, uh, you use, you know, very often when you uh, do screen by screen, I mean, we can even open one and take a quick look. Um, you want to have some continuity when you're drawing that. Uh, let's take a look, for example, at Sunus Curse here. So, or how do you call that a stage? Right. Okay. So this is this is the whole map in one continuous. So it's only one map, right? But each of these boxes here is a different screen in the game and i mean look at the size of this i can encode all this in memory it's never going to work i don't have enough memory on the cpc it's only 64k including video memory stack and everything so what i need what i had to do is to make a python tool that basically extracts the different rooms and, and encode them independently so tile doesn't support doing that in a nice way. I mean, other than that, the tool is great, but yeah, you can do that. So instead, 
Oh, I forgot to add the the nice this this thing here, the holes. My son was asking me, "What is that, Papa? What is those holes?" And I told him, "Well, it's a cave." So I thought, "Let's add some holes." So it looks a little bit more cave or interesting, right? And he said, yeah, okay. Cool. That now looks more like a cave, isn't it? It's, I don't know, 20% more cave than before. Another one here. It really doesn't matter. Cool. So yeah, in this case, it really doesn't matter. I think we can have a number of JSON files and each JSON file is an independent st stage. So um, it's going to be super simple because we just need to read the JSON file, get the data and, and go for it. So I mean, kind of tempted to use... So we have PNG pal here. So um, PNG pal, let's call MapPy and go from there. So it's going to be similar in a way because we're going to do the same thing, right? So we're going to generate a binary the same. Uh, so actually we can copy most of it to be honest because the bases are going to be the same the only difference is that we're not going to open an image we're going to open a json file so ld and strip we're going to use the same to uh, so so tile json map to dodo there you go so input i don't want to call it json but yeah we can call it json yeah oh yes file something like this and the output well we could be calling just input anyway whatever um object name for the i mean this is going to be super simple at the beginning but it will grow because we're going to add entities and we're going to place the entities here like i'm doing in this one uh the only difference is that in this one i did all the reading from the json of uh, file we just get from tile in Haskell, uh, but in this project that we're going to do differently. We're going to encode the map data as a binary in a internal format, and we're going to go with that. Super simple. So, I mean, actually, I mean, I can even copy this because it's going to be the same. Um, so instead of, no, actually, that's not true. That's not true. We actually, that's actually rubbish. We didn't, it's not going to be anywhere close to that. I mean, we can do the if, if name is main, then run the main. And it's not going to be the same because we're going to open the. the um, so with uh, open arguments uh, by json read text as fd then data is json load fd so that is that is loading the json file um and then what is going to be reuse is the output here which probably i'm duplicating in all the files and that's not a good thing to do so let's go let's call that out and in out we're going to build 
the binary data we're going to use and yeah that looks good and that's all we're going to use for here okay so now um now in stage json what are we going to do with this actually give me a second i'm going to stop a fan i have on top of me because i'm just getting a little bit cold give me a sec Okay, I'm going to give you this. Is... Uh, I don't want to get a summer cold. Cool. The, now that the fan is out of the picture. Okay, so basically... Um, so, in layers we're going to find we're going to find the a tile layer that is called name map it's it's called map so so tile layer is going to be or oh, we can call it el which is shorter is going to be ba, 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 ba. so it's a list of layers so in data we say layers and then that gives us a list um we just we can use the first one but now we need to find the, we find the layer so you know what let's do a function here get layer data and a name so for L in data layers if data sorry if L name is name return L otherwise uh, index or oh, hold oh not found error now um okay value error value error we can say layer s not found <sighs> why is complaining about this give me ambiguous variable l it is ambiguous. In which way? Because it's too short. Well, L is L. In this context, it's a local variable. Why do you care? Anyway. So it was get layer, layer, right? So get layer data and it's called map so that gives us a that is giving us what is complaining about oh because it's not get ladder it's get layer okay so that gives us the the oh let's call it map layer okay so now in out is going to be the output of the of the uh, although in reality okay so the thing is we know the size of the map so but we don't we're never going to know what is the size of the entities because the entity is going to be information to spawn those entities so it will be the x coordinate the y coordinate um the type of entity and maybe some parameters so that's probably something that has to go after the map data so what i'm going to put first is going to be you know the map data so it's going to be basically extend map layer and then it's going to be basically data right now question is is that correct? 
Uh, probably not because... Okay, so the first GAD is 1. But we want to be 0 base. So... Hmm. I'm trying to see. So after the data here, we have height, ID, name, opacity, and things. But it's not telling us what is the first GAD. So we need to get that from the tie set. Well, we're going to support only one tie set. So we can do actually we can do that if the length of data I mean this is just because someone someone might use this well, I don't think anyone would use this but just in case just in case uh, because I know I'm not going to make that mistake but but Um, so I don't know. Something like this. Why not? And what is this complaining? The line is too long. Man, make it shorter. Now, I mean, the formatter is happy with it. So the linter is not happy with the formatter. One of them is wrong. But I don't think I care at the moment. So so um, the tile set is going to be data. Tile sets. And it's going to be zero. And why do we need that? Because we're going to do for, shall we do it functional? Can we do a map? Okay. Do we still have map? Yes. So Lambda X is going to be X minus tile set. First GID and then the map layer, right? That's it. So that should do it. So we're going to start from zero, and if some tile is not set in the map, it will crash. It would have a, be a problem. Um, shall we do something about that? Because minus one, no, it's okay. Minus one will be because we're going to encode this. This is going to be bytes. So minus one will translate into 255. So that's probably okay. I mean, it really doesn't need to be an extent here. Uh, this is weird, but, but let's make a like to do like this. Although in reality we can just do this. Um, is this a list or is an iterator? We don't know. We'll see when we try to use it. Okay, so... Um, so we need to add that now. So image objects. So let's do map objects, shall we? So it's going to be... Why did I do this differently? Okay, well, 
maps. It's going to be... Yeah, but I'm not going to do it like that. Because I want them in order and I don't trust these to sort things properly. So, so the first one we call it what it was it. It was a stage. That's fine. Let's do that for now. Because I'm not very confident that this is going to be work the way I think. So maps, then we do this. Mamu Jimbo with it to just replace the name of the JSON by the object and then it's going to be similar to this so but instead of being image, image objects it's going to be map objects and it's going to be whatever JSON is going to be a map and in tools we're going to be a map the two parameters and and wait a minute why did i do that no and then we do the clean we delete all the objects fine and it did work oh no it didn't uh data stage doesn't match the target pattern why not? Uh, what did it do wrong? So data stage JSON. So data in my, oh, because it, oh, that space. Okay. So we have a map now. Do we? What is it? I can't see it. I'm completely blind. So... No, what's going on? So... PNSpad... No, it didn't work. I'm missing something. I'm missing something. I'm missing something. So... Oh, objects. Oh, we need to add the, the actual... The map objects. Of course. Otherwise, it's not going to link them. Uh, uh, okay, uh, let's make that executable, yes, so we have a stage now, that's really cool, that's really good, uh, I saw a space somewhere I didn't like, uh, it really doesn't matter, okay, so this is already creating the map, so let's go to data and and let's add the map which is called going to be stage stage start right still happy yeah still happy so okay so let's call it map shall we so so Okay, so it's going to be... I think there is some sort of way of... You don't need to do this anymore in modern C, I think. Okay, so what is the map is going to do? Um, so I guess... we need to do something like so there's going to be only one map so we probably need to do something like map in it uh, or i i decided to not use namespaces or anything so in it in it no map in it and And we're going to pass the map, so it's going to be const doing at and map, and then so because that the map in it should be run only once, 
because it should it will in initialize the entities in the map right and but we're not going to do anything with it for now it's fine and then map render and that's it and because there's only going to be one map we're going to do later I mean, we can change our mind later, but so this is going to be constant at and we can say map. <laughs> Why not? And here we just basically for now, we just need to track the map. So when you need that, we just say map equals to map and that's so let's go in C map which is current map sorry I don't have good ideas for names now and the map render uh, what it's going to do is we're going to use VGA and we're going to use data.h so in data we know it's going to be we're going to use the ties potentially we could be passing a, a, a pointer to the ties we want to use but for now we can we can change that later there's always let's do what we need to do uh, the st still necessary things and we can improve afterwards so well the map only has a map doesn't have anything else right so and we're going to use the tiles I mean we can do this just to make it slightly better I mean it may complain that we are not using them you can use yeah okay so sorry what is complaining about ah uh, because it's const Blah. okay yeah and because it's const constant data we're never going to be able to modify that okay that is no use I'm happy with that cool so that is going to be the tiles um so so we're going to need to have some information here right so the width is going to be uh the tile width is eight eight pixels the tile height is going to be eight pixels and then width is going to be we said it was 40 yeah the height is going to be 23 uh, then it's going to be an offset y of 16 because we're going to put the the hood on the top so we're not going to render on zero um, what else do we need to know we need to know mm, that's probably it right okay so that right so we're going to need uh, a rect destination sorry destination that is going to be zero zero whatever but it's going to be always eight by eight so there you go so and we're going to need uh, the source as well and in here 
we need to pass the size of this, which is 160 by 48. So in source, we're going to select the tile and then we need to know more things, right? Because we need to know how to find the tiles in the tile set. And yeah, I don't like how many, you know, hard coding this. Okay. Um, hmm. How many columns do we have? Yeah, I don't like this. But the other option is to get this from here and in and what? And provide that as part of the map data. I think it is not worth it for now. Um so it has 20 columns. Why do we need to know that? Because we need to know we need to be able to locate a specific tile in the tile set based on the number alone. So if we get, oh, the tile is going to be 41. So 41, we know that it has to be, you know, we need to know how many X and Y we need to get to get the 41 here, right? So for that, we need to need, know how many columns do we have in the tile set, uh, the size of the tile, you know, all that stuff. And with that, we can calculate. So, uh, so Y is going to be zero and Y is less than map height, right? Y plus plus for X is going to be zero, X is less than map height. So the width, width, width. Okay. So now we, I mean, the destination is, is easy because the destination X is always going to be X times uh, map tile width and for y is going to be y for my time hey right so that is destination on the screen plus uh the map ops y so that's the destination now the source is going to be so at the end it's going to be bleed RC um, so so bleed RC and that's why I thought that's you know if it has complexity if we had all the dice set in one column it would be super easy to process that information but then drawing here would have been a real pain so we kind of find the balance it would be faster if we use the data in one column, uh, but it's okay because we have to draw the map once uh, at the beginning and then we're going to preserve the background, I think. So it should be okay. So bleed RC uh, expects the sprite, which is the tiles, and then the source rect is going to be this one and this is going to be destination and that's not how you do it like this uh, cool so now we need to do the source which is the interesting bit so for the x we need to get the tile so to get the tile sorry this is not right this is uh, so binary tiles start. Okay, so this has to be uh, uh, tiles. Now to get the X, 
what we're going what we had to do is um x plus y uh, times map width so that is the tile number that we have here in this case we we're talking about 41 right which is not going to be 41 because we're going to subtract one but it's going to be 40 41 it's okay 40. now we need to got, translate that 40 into this uh table here or here this is to see right so so 40 is going to be um so let's do something here let's have a t so because you're going to use this few times so although it's probably it's probably better if we we put it here because in that way the compiler can optimize in the loop and use a register or whatever is it is doing these days. So T is a tile. So if we divide that by by the number of calls, um. So we get we get the row and then the remainder of that of um of that division is going to give us the column. So the the division is the row the the reminder is the is the column and this has to be multiplied by map tile width which is eight and now the y no I, I don't think I'm doing this properly no this this is not right so the x is the reminder <laughs> yeah, so the X is the reminder. And the Y is how many columns we have? So there it is. So there it is. Right? Okay, so if, if we have 41, 40, right? And we had 20 columns. Um if we do the division, it's going to tell us 0, 1, 2. Yes. So that's y. And the y for um, times by the height of the tile sets. The tile set, right? Or the tiles, right. And if we do the the remainder. Uh, <laughs> what's going on? Why is it saying 0? I don't understand. Oh, it's going to give me zero. Yeah, but that's not right. Because that's not, is that the one we're looking at? Oh, because it's 41. Okay, forget about that. It's doing some mind tricks with that. It's zero, one. Okay, cool. So one is going to be uh, tile width. Yeah, I think this is fine. So this will give us the right position. Okay, so let's go to mine. Let's try it and hopefully it won't crash. We don't need to do the testing now. So in it map and we're going to say binary uh stage start and then render map it was render map 
no map render map you need the map render which i was saying i'm not going to do the nice space thing but i did it okay yeah it's because I, i'm not doing a library uh, really for people to use so i mean i guess we could be doing you know text put text but Okay, so let's stop broken here because I'm not typing pro properly today. So then, because I'm not including the map. <laughs> That's not what we expected. Okay, so that didn't work. Excellent. Now is when the fun starts. What I'm doing obviously wrong here. So do I remember how this works? Source with the spray with a spray hate. So that's in source. So I'm doing it properly. So it's 160 by 48. Wait a minute. Is that right? Is that 48 of eight? Yeah, okay. Because it's eight. Eight pixels is one. So yeah, that looks okay. So destination X is whatever is the X. Hmm. That looks okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What I'm doing here? Binary tiles start. Uh... <laughs> well, it didn't crash. That would have been kind of funny. Like, right? Like, like a super crash without knowing what's going on because I I didn't bother to set up GDP inside of those box GDB so I don't have debugger because I thought and eh, yeah I don't really use debugger on on a bit much so maybe we don't need that yeah but if we will if we, if we were scratching that would have been pretty bad Ooh. anyway Definitely, I don't like those box. So... So it's just, sometimes it crashes like that. It's not crashing, but it's stuck. And it's nothing related to what I'm doing. It's just that sometimes, for no reason. Anyway, so yeah. So that's the map being rendered and it looks like, yeah, it's fine. I mean, there's nothing really complicated in this. So that's the map being rendered. Um, so uh, okay, how do we call that? We're mad to empty one. Okay, kind of. Uh, so uh, no, we want to co commit everything in one go, right? So because basically we change the map and the tiles, right? Let's commit everything in one go. Who cares? So cool. So we got a render now. And we got an importer. 
yeah, to some extent. I mean, it's not completely finished, but... Cool. So, yeah. Good progress. Uh, I think I'm going to leave it here for today because I wanted to make a shortish one, but at the end, it's almost two hours now. Um, yeah, this is looking good and promising. Can I say full screen? Is this breaking completely obvious right now? I don't know. Hold on a second. It looks really good. I am very pleased with it. Um, again, I mean, I, I know now that I can do, I have a old laptop when I old is like 16, 15 years old, something like that. I mean, the technology, the laptop is probably not that old. It's probably 13 years old. 13, 14. Um, and it's perfect. It's, it's going to be my DOS box. <laughs> my machine for testing DOS, really. Uh, I can boot with a USB stick with uh, a free DOS. And I can just run this just fine. So cool. So yeah, good stuff. Good progress. Uh, I think if we keep the pace with this, it's post it's, there, is, there are chances I finish the game, really, uh, on time. I mean, next day, likely um, to start the, the entity system and the player, so we can start testing my sprites that I haven't tried, really. Uh, I think they're going to look okay. Uh, going to be smallish but you know 16 by 16 i think it's, it's fine it's going to the idea is to make a a cute hopefully fun to play arcade uh, game so yeah the next thing yeah i think it's going to be that start moving the the, the player character on the screen uh tweaking you know how to get a good feel of how you know, the gravity is going to work, collision detection, uh, which is going to be very simple, really. I mean, we have... Um, we have everything we need here already, because we know that CMAP is the current map we're using, and we have... Um, all the map data in there. So the only thing we need to check is, uh, you know, if we agree that the two first rows are going to be background, and which means they are not solid, uh, we know that the first solid is going to be that one, which is style number 40, right? So yeah, everything that is bigger than 39 is solid. That's it. That's how you get your collision detection. So we get X and Y, we convert that into a coordinates on CMAP, and that's it. Uh, so it's going to be very simple, uh, to be honest. Then getting the gravity may be a little bit trickier, but I'm, I don't mind. I mean, I can just copy or look at what I did in other games. Um, I mean, recently the Haskell one, but that is Haskell, so it's not C. So it's probably not very useful to look at that. Yeah, but I can I can find one of my old projects and see, you know, trying to find some some code to speed things up and don't spend too much doing it from scratch. Cool, yeah, looking good. Anyway, uh see you next time, Racing the Beam. Uh bye now. <laughs>